Hey, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, and Tadai. We're going to be covering solo strings, solo string VSTs, sample libraries, this sort of thing. I did a ensemble strings video, and it was really successful in that a lot of people were commenting and adding their two cents and agreeing and disagreeing, and I really liked that. So that's what we want. I want you guys to learn stuff and also to go and tell me what you think I missed or what you think I got right and all that. So awesome. Please keep that coming. So again, we're going to be focusing on solo stuff, solo string stuff, and and a lot of the same companies are going to be coming up. Again, if you want more information, go to the description. I'm going to copy and paste a link of everything that I mentioned. You can go to the websites. You can download demos. You can listen to the samples, all that sort of stuff. So let's get started. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Veer Harmonic. I have talked about these guys on the channel before. I'm a huge fan of what they do, the spirit of the company. These are, uh, I think, two guys out of the Czech Republic that run Veer Harmonic. They make a Bohemian series, and we have Bohemian Violin and Bohemian Cello. 4.6 gigs for the violin and 5.3 gigs for the cello. I own the violin. Um, uh, well, I own the Bohemian Violin VST. It's terrific in my view. Um, I found a really good quote out there from someone. I don't know who left this. Maybe it was a review or something. But this person says, I have tried a few of the existing and newly created VI violins over time. But for the music I create, I find that every time I use very harmonic strings, it sounds as close to how I intended the music. So I feel it's kind of the same way. Um, I'm really sort of proud to be a very harmonic sort of solo strings owner. I'm excited for the direction of the company. They're, uh, they seem to be a kind of newish company, and uh, the scripting is incredible. The other thing I really like is that they have, well, there's two things I love about Veer Harmonic. The first is they have little demos that you can try. They have like sort of stripped down versions of Bohemian Cello and Violin, so you can actually just download the free UVI player. It's not Contact, it's UVI. It's a different sort of sampling platform. Um, and you can try out the sort of, I don't know, you can try a very sort of pedestrian version of the cello or the violin just to get used to the way that everything's key switched and all that stuff and the layout and all that. And you get a, a really quick glimpse at the sound um, of either the violin or the cello. So I love that. The other thing that I love is they've got this sort of upgrade scheme where if you buy... Um, the first iteration, they're going to be adding new articulations and maybe mic positions, I'm not really sure, but they just added the first upgrade, so they added new articulations and all this stuff. So if you buy early, you can pay like 149 euros, and then you get the free updates as they add more things to Bohemian Violin. If you wait and you buy on the third sort of iteration or the third update, it's going to cost you probably a lot more. Um, and the next updates are free, obviously. Um, maybe they're not free. Maybe they're only free if you buy at the very beginning, but I don't think that would make any sense. But anyway, they have a, a really smart upgrade scheme, and now with a lot of companies doing Splice, where you can sort of rent to own stuff, I think that this is, in the sample library space, an interesting way to go. It's not quite subscription, but it does encourage you to get started early at the ground floor. And it also gives you the impression as a user that they're going to be coming up with more stuff, so it's kind of exciting to, to be the first one Christmas Day when they add the new sort of upgrades. So anyway, I love this of these strings. Um, I'm excited to, I'll, I'll get the cello eventually, but for me, the violin is like everything I need for a solo violin. It has a very sort of rustic, wild, Bohemian describes it really well, but it's, it's kind of um, very capricious. It changes. It has a lot of personality. It's not something that's going to blend in flush with all the other instruments that you have. It's a lead instrument that has a very kind of old-fashioned kind of vibe, if that makes sense. I don't even know. Just go listen. Make it up. Make up for yourself if you want to buy it. But anyway, there you go. Uh, Vier Harmonic, Bohemian Violin, and Bohemian Cello. Next up is Spitfire. So these guys have a few offerings. They have uh, Sakani, Sakani, I'm not really sure, Sakoni strings, uh, the, it's a quartet, so you have a violin, a viola, a viola, violin, a viola, um, actually two violins, a viola, I think, and a cello, and that goes for 70 gigs, so that's going to be pretty intense, um, and that came out in 2016, so pretty new. Um, they've got these solo strings, They've got Artisan Violin and Artisan Cello, and those were both announced to those Artisan series in 2015. Um, the solo strings, I think they have a violin, a viola, and a cello. Um, those are, that's 6.2 gigs, and the Artisan Violin and Cello, that's 7.8 gigs, 7.6 gigs each. Um, so I don't own any of these, uh, but obviously Spitfire, their reputation sort of precedes them. They've been around for 10 years. They celebrated their 10 year anniversary this year. Um, incredible company, so I assume that uh, those products are consistent with, you know, the sort of quality and consistency that we're seeing from them 
but I don't own them. A lot of people ask me what I should uh, recommend for them, and I usually I usually send them to Veer Harmonic or I send them to Orchestral Tools because I think those two companies are making some awesome stuff. We'll talk about OT, Orchestral Tools, in just a minute. But uh, the Sakani Strings, uh, very new, very highly regarded, well-respected library. Um, solo Strings and the Artisan Series are all sort of, go and listen, check it out, and maybe it's the, there's going to be something there in there for you um, solo-wise. So next is Vienna Symphonic Library. So you've got the Solo Strings. I think you've got the first uh, chairs, second violin, viola, um, cello. Um, this came out in 2009. Uh, Vienna Symphony, Symphonic Library, whatever. I've talked about them before on the channel. These guys are sort of... They're as old, I think, as East West. Uh, they were the first sort of to arrive on the scene, and you should know that that you should know that they've been around for a while. This came out in 2009. Back in 2009, it got five out of uh, five stars on Sound on Sound. That was the review that they gave. Um, but again, it's 2009, so listen to see if you know. One of the pe reasons people are kind of reluctant to go with a lot of the East West stuff or the Vienna Symphonic Library stuff is because those sounds, because they've been around as long as they have. Maybe people have heard them in a lot of other productions, video games, TV, movies, or whatever, so we've kind of become maybe a bit bored with that sound. Um, I don't think that you should be thinking about it that way, but I just want to be remiss if I didn't mention that. I think you should go and make up your own mind and be your own person and decide if these things are right for you. But that being said, Vienna Symphonic Library is expensive. Um, all these guys are pretty expensive, but they take the cake. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so anyway, solo strings... First, second chairs, um, double bass, viola, and uh, cello. Anyway, five out of five on Sound on Sound. And Sound on Sound is pretty much the only place that I would ever go if I wanted to read a review on a sample library. The only place I think anyone should go is Sound on Sound. Moving along. East-West, Quantum Leap. We have Hollywood Solo Violin, and we have Hollywood Solo Cello, 39 gigs for the solo violin, and 40.7 gigs for the solo cello. So I was actually able to dig up a couple of reviews, and the things that were sort of consistent coming across, I don't own this, um, actually I do own them because I am a Composer Cloud user. For people who don't know, uh, the Composer Cloud is a subscription service, the first sort of of its kind in the sample orchestral sample library realm. And I should mention something that a very helpful commenter pointed out on my earlier video that there is the VAT sort of charge included if you're in the if you're in Europe, um, and that is not often included or at least advertised in the price on the website, even for a European uh, customer. So be aware that I say that it's twenty nine bucks uh, American or whatever. It might be that the equivalent of twenty nine dollars Euro plus VAT, which kind of adds twenty percent to the price, which is kind of a crummy thing. But be aware of that. So um, they are part of Composer Cloud. I guess I do own them. I haven't used them a ton because, again, I've got my favorites, which is not very healthy, but I'm human. And again, I picked up some sort of reviews and some pros and cons, so I'll read uh, the pros and cons for the East West Quantum Leap Hollywood Violin and Solo Cello uh, series. So the pros, mostly coming out of sound on sound, if I'm being honest. The solo violin, they say, sounds great and is highly playable. The tone of the solo cello is, an ab is absolutely exquisite, they said. All instruments are compatible with the larger Hollywood Orchestra collection. So if you are sort of monotheistic about your sample libraries and all this stuff, you pray to one sort of company and you've got the Hollywood um, Orchestra collection, then these things are going to be sort of, they're going to fit the dress code of the larger ensemble collection, which is, you know, the Hollywood thing. So that's really good. The cons, they say the solo strings plays no trills or portamentos. That might be a big deal breaker for you. Maybe it won't be. The other thing is that they say is that the solo cello's legato slur patch needs some work. So to them, um, and again, a, a, a critical voice that I take very seriously, to sound on sound, the legato slur wasn't realistic enough or maybe wasn't playable enough or something like that just gonna put do not disturb on the phone okay next up we have um orchestral tools everyone knows about these guys uh they're responsible for the berlin brass berlin series they have berlin strings uh, for solo stuff they have berlin first chairs for the strings and i believe that includes first violin second violins viola and cello uh, I think there might be two cello, so celli, and that includes um, all that stuff at 32, uh, 33.2 gigabytes, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then they have the Nocturne Series 2, which is very highly regarded. They've got uh, Nocturne Violin and Nocturne Cello, and the Violin is 4.7 gigs, and the Cello is 2.7 gigabytes. Um, this is terrific stuff in my view. I have this. I 
am a huge sort of believer in orchestral tools um, in their capsule player for contact very impressed with it now you know that that's out there I want to sort of add some of the pros that Sound on Sound included in their review a little while ago. They didn't include any cons, so that should tell you something about the library, according to them. The pros, recorded in the Teldex scoring stage from five mic positions, first chairs, is the ideal complement to the Orchestral Tools Berlin Strings series, which is sort of the well-known thing that I mentioned at the top of this little section. And its four instruments work equally well in solo or in an ensemble. So if you're looking to do a quartet or something like that, it's going to be, uh, they're going to complement each other well, as they should. Uh, the other pro, the nocturne violin is absolutely superb they say and the nocturne cello is the bee's knees so next up is a company again i haven't dabbled with too much but you should know they do some solo stuff it's sinistring solo uh violin first and second viola cello all that for 50 gigabytes which is pretty sizable considering orchestral tools where you get the first chairs violins violas cello nocturne violin and nocturne cello all that stuff doesn't add up to 50 gigs but for all that for cine samples it does 50 gigabytes uh, one of those companies that people ask me about all the time and I just haven't downloaded anything by them, but now you know they make solo stuff, so if you're a fan of their ensemble stuff or anything else, uh, this might be consistent and fit the dress code, if you will, of your other stuff from Cine Samples, so now you know. Next up, Kirk Hunter, and I've talked about Kirk Hunter before. It's sort of the indie um, kind of sample library maker, um, and they, or he, they make the Spotlight solo strings, um, violin, viola, cello, double bass, and that goes for five gigabytes. So you can find that at kirkhunterstudios.com, and that's just there. Um, I have not played with it, but you know, it's five gigabytes, which is pretty nimble, pretty small, and that's there. I'm assuming it's going to be at a pretty cost-effective price. And again, just because I, I got to, I'm I judge books by their covers, and I've seen the Kirk Hunter sort of stuff. It sounds really great to me. Don't get fooled by the uh, GUI, the graphic user interface, or anything like that. Um, Focus on the playability, focus on the scripting, focus on the sound, don't focus on how it looks. If anything, it might be a boon to you that other people might be kind of like, oh, I don't know about these guys, and you're the one using it, and because you're the only one using it, you have that sort of sound, and everyone else is chasing another sound from another company. So just think about that. Next is another company that I talk about a little bit, uh, Strezov. Sretsov sampling. Uh, they have the macabre solo strings, violin, viola, and cello, 4.5 gigabytes. So we talked about them before in another library about sort of ensemble string uh, stuff, and they make solo stuff too. So check out the macabre series. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description like everything else. Boom, boom, boom. Next is a, a company that people talk about a lot. Um, whenever I go to the contact sample library group, on Facebook or whatever, people are always talking about these guys. Embertone, embertone.com. Uh, they make some very reputable, well liked um, solo stuff. Uh, and they've got five things here. And one of them is the Joshua Bell violin. That's the first that I'll start with. That's They actually uh, sample a Stradivarius, which is a very old, beautiful sounding instrument. Um, not sure how many gigs it'll run you, but it's probably somewhere around like five to seven gigabytes because the other violins and cellos and other stuff that they sample, they've got the uh, Friedlander violin, which is 3.5 gigs, the Fischer viola, which is 4.3 gigs, the Blackus cello, which is three gigs, and the Leonard, I don't know, uh, bass, which is 4.2 um, gigabytes. So the Embertone series, highly regarded. Uh, people rave about it. They're very impressed with it. Um, whenever someone on that group, that Facebook group asks about what solo thing should I buy, usually the names that come up are, surprisingly people don't say Spitfire that much. So it's usually orchestral tools, uh, Veer Harmonic, I'll usually pitch that. Every now and then there's an East West, uh, and usually more than anything, there's Embertone. People really, really, really love uh, this series. So just know that. Getting down to the last three here, we have the Chris Hine, uh, chrishine.net. He, he or they do a solo violin, four gigs, a solo viola, four gigs, solo cello, four gigs. Anyway, just know that they have that, which is kind of cool. Um, the last two here, sample modeling, they have a violin, a viola, and a cello. They have not published how many gigs this takes up, which is kind of weird, but anyway, samplemodeling.com. Go check out, listen to the demos, uh, violin, viola, cello, and finally, we have the harmonic subtones, um, and you can get that at bestservice.de, which is, I guess, German. And they have a emotional cello, 
that sort of makes up as far as I can tell, and I'm just doing research, going to Sound on Sound, going to other publications and all that stuff, finding a nice curated list. This is the best I can do. Um, if there's other companies that I've forgotten or anything like that, leave a note in the comment and other people can find it. I'll make sure to upvote it to make it nice and visible. If you're a third-party company that I haven't talked to, third-party company, if you're a company I haven't mentioned or whatever, just please get in touch and I'll upvote it and we give it some visibility. I want everyone to know what's out there so that they can go and make up their own minds and make their own choices when it comes to purchasing a library like this and sort of picking something that sort of makes sense to them. I mean, there's only one, I think, outlier in this whole library, and that's that's Fear Harmonic because they use the UVI platform and not the Contact one. All these other guys use Contact, so you should know that UVI, it's very easy to use and all that stuff, but it is a different sort of flavor from a Contact sort of instrument. Um, I think everyone else is. So just things like that, like go to the website, really learn about it, and the last thing you want to do is download something and then realize that you've maybe wasted money because, uh, again, it's not contact, it's UVI, or uh, there's an articulation there that you really needed that they don't have, and you didn't look in sort of the, the, the liner notes of the instrument. So be making some informed choices and informed decisions about what exactly you're getting into with these guys because they do not, many of them do not do return returns on I mean, it's software right so they don't do a lot of returns a lot of these guys don't demo so really sort of um just just be be very careful and patient when you're going through all these guys and and, and making your sort of decision okay anyway that's it for me um that's it for the solo strings thing i think the next thing that i'm gonna do is uh maybe we'll move out of strings and we'll do like a nice big sort of orchestra with brass percussion woodwinds and strings we'll do a nice sort of big like huge sort of a uh, sample um, library thing. I'm kind of losing my words. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Take care. See you later.